welcome back to the Partner Time. In this week's episode, we're going to be doing an unboxing of Firelock Games Oak and Iron. So in addition to that, we're also going to do a painting tutorial of some of the ships that are in that core box set. So just recently in the mail, uh, the Punter Den just received uh, a core box set for Oak and Iron. And I'm really excited to get that down to the table and we're going to take a, a deeper dive into what you get in the box. But I'm going to show you the box right now. So this is the core box set. Uh, I'm just, yeah, I haven't opened it yet. <laughs> but we will uh, in, in a minute here. Uh, and uh, just showing you kind of what's in here briefly. Of course, we'll do a deeper dive when we get down to the table. So you get some cards, dice, uh, you got tokens, markers, uh, the ships. Uh, there's a battle mat in here, terrain. Anything and everything you're going to need to play Oak and Iron is in this box. Now, of course, uh, Farlock Games has released a... Uh, uh, expansions for Oak and Iron. It's been out for a few years already, uh, so you can really flush out that world. Um, it's essentially a game of uh, naval battles, so you you essentially have uh, fleet battles. More so Blood Plunder sometimes is, well, I play Blood Plunder fleet battles, but sometimes it's uh, more just ship one ship on uh, one ship, and, and Blood and Plunder goes into land battles and amphibious assaults and everything else, right? Uh, where this one's more to uh, fleet battles and more ship battles. Uh, it's a skirmish style game. I'm not an expert on the rules. I've uh, I've only seen people play it. I've never actually played the game myself. Um, and that's kind of why I wanted to get one. Um, I want to be in, participate in like what they call an Iron Man tournament at some point, uh, where you play Oak and Iron, Blood and Valor, and Blood and Plunder uh, to uh, to be in, in that event. But I've never played Oak and Iron, so I figured I'd better get that. It'd be a good time to talk about it on this channel. We're in that uh, global uh, campaign right now, the uh, uh, Summer of Plunder. Uh, and Oak and Iron is also a component of that. So you can play Blood and Plunder and Oak and Iron, right? So I figured this would be an appropriate time to do this unboxing and this painting tutorial uh, during this event. Uh, so that's... One of the things we're going to be doing, I also want to do uh, an update briefly uh, for that uh, Summer of Plunder. Uh, we definitely have, uh, I just want to shout out to all those uh, English players out there. As of when I filmed this video, which was, uh, the English faction was winning at the time. Uh, so I want to thank everybody for playing all those games uh, as the English faction and getting us off to the early lead. Now... I'm hoping that carries over because this, uh, like, as this will be in the second week when this video airs. Uh, but we're going to play as many matches. I've been playing as many matches as I can to help uh, the English faction uh, keep uh, the lead. Um, but anyways, uh, there are other things I want to announce. So remember I was going to announce some of the prizes that you potentially can win over and above what I already announced. Uh, I did want to talk about the... Uh, so the person that plays the most amount of matches uh, as the English commander uh, for the entire campaign, and this was already announced by Blood and Pigment, uh, their commander will paint them uh, a miniature or like a legendary commander or some kind of commander miniature. So I picked Henry Morgan. So Henry Morgan is the miniature that I'm going to paint for uh, the person that plays the most amount of English, uh, or flies the most amount of the English flag during this uh, entire campaign. It's going to get one of these. And remember, that person's also going to win the wigwam, right? So that's two other things. Uh, and I'm considering there's going to be some other kind of prize for that person as well. So they're going to they're gonna win quite a few things. So that's cool. Uh, and then the other thing is more uh, week-specific. So each week there's a different event. Uh, when I was filming this, we were doing the 50-point match. Of course, this actual week we would be doing the Bark Wars. Uh, but this actual miniature I'm going to do for, uh, let me just, I got the Blood and Pigments page up right here on the screen here. Uh, and they have a, a week called uh, A New Frontier. So essentially you're uh, you're playing, or sorry, a Frontier uh, uh, Wars. Uh, and you, you essentially have to play the rules around Fire on the Frontier um, during that week. So we're going to be playing matches or scenarios that are in that uh, Fire on the Frontier uh, book. And the person that plays the most amount of matches uh, as the English commander during that week is going to win this uh, Benjamin Church uh, miniature. So I'm going to paint this up for you and send this out to you for the player that plays the most during that week. So stay tuned for that uh, Frontier Wars and win a Benjamin Church miniature. Uh, and then the other thing I want to announce is the uh, Bark. 
So I'm gonna paint one of these barks up. Uh, I'm gonna do the, uh, the sails and the rigging and kind of make it portable like I did for my Dutch bark that I did on this channel. Uh, and I'm gonna send that out uh, for the person. So uh, this is the uh, week of the upgrade, the flagship, that's, that's, that's the challenge week. So that takes place in August 1st uh, to the 7th. Uh, and the person that, again, plays the most games as the English commander that week, will get a painted bark uh, from from myself that I'll ship out to them. Now, I didn't say the dates on the first one, right? I, I mentioned the name of it, uh, Frontier Wars. Uh, that's on July 11th to the 17th. So that's that week uh, that that takes place in. So again, there'll be other announcements throughout the, uh, the tournament uh, for other potential prizes you can win. But I just wanted to announce those uh, uh, so far. I announced some uh, last week some train pieces uh, that I'm going to be building. Uh, and these are potential prizes that you can win for being the English commander. Uh, so keep playing those English uh, matches and uh, there'll be uh, prizes to be won. All right, so that pretty well covers everything. Uh, let's get down to the table and let's start unboxing and let's start painting. Okay, before I open this uh, box here, I just want to talk about this mat briefly. This is another mat from Cigar Box Battle. Uh, I just want to thank them uh, for sending this over to the Plunder Den. It's a Mediterranean battle, uh, kind of a Sicily map. But I think it would go well with uh, the Zulu Warriors that I was planning on doing for Blood and Steel. Uh, and actually, uh, I set the table up here because I'm playing a game of Blood and Plunder. Um, for the uh, global campaign and I actually used that mat for uh, putting a small village or city on top uh, It actually looked uh, really good. So I can see lots of uh, it's kind of one of those multi-purpose maps that can fit a lot of different uh, areas. It looks really good All right, so let's get to the unboxing uh, uh, Obviously, I'm just cutting the plastic off <laughs> uh, So, you know, I, I'm just doing this live so uh, You know, you always have struggles um, but it's nice to see that it's all packed in nicely and tightly into this box here. Uh, the lid's got, uh, pretty hard to get open here. Um, but we got it open. All right, so I'm not exactly sure what's in here, but it looks like I've got the instruction manual on the top here. Um, and, uh, you know, just to take a brief look through there. Obviously, I'm not familiar 100% uh, with all the rules. Uh, I've seen this game being played, so I kind of have a, a basic understanding of uh, what things do in this game. Uh, I've played Blood and Plunder, and some of them, some things are similar, but there's a lot of things that are different. But it's in that same skirmish style uh, world, um, but it's a ship fleet battle, so it's really cool. Like a miniature. Um, more miniature than the miniatures. <laughs> <laughs> uh, smaller than Blood Plunder, anyways. Uh, but uh, the rule book looks good. It's laid out uh, very similar to the other Firelock Games instructions, so this should be pretty simple. I uh, just have to spend some time uh, reading through it. Uh, make sure you check out Blood and Plunder. <laughs> Giving the subs up. Uh, I do love that game. Uh, but I just wanted to show you the quick this picture. They got the uh, Man of War, Merchant Man, Gentleman's Fortune, and Ship of the Line. Uh, those are other expansions for Oak and Iron. All right, so let's start getting into the box. That was the instruction manual. Um, so you get these sheets in here. Um, and, of course, uh, you just pop these all out, and they're all the, the tokens in the game. They're, they represent things there for movement and measurement and... Uh, all sorts of stuff on here. Some of the things I don't know what they're for. I was looking at uh, one for a wind gauge or a, a wind direction. Um, and then they have, because uh, I know at the beginning of the game, you have to go back and forth and place terrain, and they have all different assortments. Uh, I think you get to pick. You don't get to put them all on there, but you pick some. Um, and here's some of the uh, choices you have. Now, they're all double-sided, so I think I'm only showing the one side here. Uh, but they have... Uh, you know, some of them have fog on one side and rocks and stones on another. Um, so they have different variations depending on what, you, uh, what you're what you looking at. So they got these little islands, which are really super cool. Uh, what would be really awesome is uh, for a terrain piece is kind of measure these out and make the exact size. 
uh, and then uh, put make them three D, right? Make a a foam version, three D dimensional with uh, with plant life on it and stuff. So this is a pile of stickers. Uh, these are for putting flags on your ships. Uh, they give you actually quite a few actually in this box. Uh, you can go with different factions. Uh, in uh, on here they have all the major ones: uh, the Dutch, the Pirates, Spanish, French, English. Uh, so you got all sorts of cool things uh, on here that you can add to your ship. Now, I, I did uh, uh, apply these to a few of the ships. They, they were really easy to put on. They weren't difficult. So I'm going to attempt here to unravel this map. <laughs> so forgive me, it's not great. Uh, it's brand new, so it's really uh, still stiff. And every time I try to open it, it just kind of pops back the other way. But... I have other stuff on the table that you can't see off the camera, uh, and it was really hard for me to open it up. I just wanted to show you guys, you know, essentially the battle mat you get in there. Uh, and I believe it's a 3x3, three, three, um, 3 feet by 3 feet. I think each one of the little squares is 3 feet, so you go 3 across, 3 up. Um, so I think, I'm pretty sure this is a 3x3 three three, uh, mat, uh, which is perfect size for oak and iron. You don't need much bigger than that, but you can play on bigger. Uh, like I have my big ocean maps, so I plan on uh, expanding on oak and iron and getting more ships and, and doing larger fleet battles. But the core set is pretty cool. It comes with six ships already, so you you got uh, quite a range of ships already. Uh, but all the bigger ones are in those other expansions, and I want to. <laughs> I definitely uh, once I start, you know, I can't stop. I'll probably keep going. Uh, so those are some other the dice. They're a little different than blood and plunder dice, so I'm not sure. 100% how they work. Uh, those, uh, the plastic bag, I'm not going to open those. Those are the plastic bases the ship sits on. They're clear bases. Um, if you're familiar with this game, uh, you'll, you know what they have. Uh, they have kind of a, also uh, show the range for guns, like uh, how wide of, of shooting range you have. Uh, so it's just a, at a base. It's a game to play the ships on. So let's take a look at some of these ships. So you got six in there, like I mentioned. They're in these little plastic baggies, uh, and they're in uh, small pieces. Now, really, it's just the, it's like five pieces, and they just click in. You know, you, you they it fits snug, which is great because you don't want them to be loose uh, and they're falling over all the time. Uh, just a note: I did actually end up gluing the front one on. You, you don't have to though. I like I put them on, and they they were able to push in, uh, but. Uh, for the painting technique that I like to do, I like to do dry bushing, and so I'm a real, little tough on the uh, the miniatures and the models that I work on. Um, so I definitely wanted that front piece uh, to be solid when I started doing that. So I decided to just glue the front on the the main mass. I left them the way they are because I painted them separately. So we'll show that when I get to the painting tutorial. Uh, just showing you that there's six ships. Uh, I think you're. <laughs> I think I've mentioned it a few times, but anyways. Uh, so here's some of the game cards. Uh, some of them are like scenario based. Some of them are country based. Um, and like I said, I'm not 100 percent how they all work, uh, but they are uh, important for uh, staging the game itself at the beginning. So then you have uh, you got character cards on here for uh, the ships themselves. So the, for the six ships in here, there's character cards in here. Uh, and these are little arrows. They're kind of like a like a paper clip. And they clip onto these cards. And it kind of just shows you where your damage is. Uh, so, you know, in the past in Blood and Plunder, I would have used just a marker. I actually ended up using beads and just putting them on there. But uh, this is actually a really cool idea where you just have this little device. You just slide up and down your card uh, and tracks the damage. All right, so I'm going to move on to the paint. So I'm going to paint everything uh, with black craft paint. I know everybody would probably cringe, go craft paint on such small miniatures. Uh, yes, we're going to paint with black craft paint. Uh, I'm going to put a nice, solid, good, sturdy craft paint and seal everything in uh, on all these pieces. So on all these ships, I primed them with black craft paint, full cart, like I always do. But when we get down to the details, we're going to move to miniature paint. So let's uh, get to the table and start uh, working on these ships. So this is after all the black paint has dried. Uh, and I'm just going to kind of show you as best as I can. Um, you can see some of the details uh, on these boats. They're quite amazing, actually, for how small they are. Um, and 
I'm just uh, illustrating that the black craft paint hasn't uh, taken away any of the details on here. This hasn't affected the ship at all. Uh, when black craft paint dries, uh, it, it, it like shrinks. And I've mentioned that in several videos. And it kind of puts itself in all the crevices and nooks and crannies, which is great when you're dry brushing because you have a black undercoat. I always like to have a dark undercoat on here uh, before I start painting. So I'm just showing you I did the sails and absolutely everything. So then I'm going to move to miniature paints. Uh, I don't want to press my luck by keep adding craft paint. Uh, so I'm going to start with uh, oak brown. Uh, and uh, I'm just kind of trying to replace the undertones I normally would uh, use with the real brown and the, and the uh, bark brown. That's a uh, fur brown I was just showing you there. So I'm moving to an army painter line. Uh, and this is skeleton bone. It's kind of uh, for my uh, uh, a lighter color for the sails. So I'm going to start with the oak brown. Um, we're, I use this little smaller brush, kind of the ones I paint my ships with, actually. Uh, but I'm going to use it for dry brushing. It's a flat brush. It's nice and small. And I'm going to paint this exactly the way I would a larger ship. So I'm going a, across the grains. So when I put that black paint on, just like I, when I did the bark tutorial, I put the uh, paint in the grains. So it kind of just stuck in there. And now I'm going across the grains uh, with this uh, oak brown. So I'm going to cover uh, this entire ship. Now I ended up only doing two ships here, and I kind of mentioned that in the intro. Uh, these actually were very time-consuming. Uh, they're very small. <laughs> so you would think, oh, it wasn't that very much to paint you need. It doesn't take very long. No, these take a long time. Uh, it's like painting a small miniature um, like a character or something like that. Uh, they they are actually uh, quite involved, and there was quite a bit I wanted to do on them. So I'm kind of showing you how to paint them all, but I actually only uh, end up taking the uh, galleon and the uh, uh, light frigate. I wanted to make an English and a Spanish ship, so uh, the rest I packed up. I, I will get to them. Um, I do want to paint uh, all of these, but I did prime the other ones. So this is after I added the real brown uh no sorry the oak brown <laughs> see i'm already getting confused uh the oak brown uh, uh army painter paint um and I, I hope you can see it in the camera uh just how i painted it now for the sails i kind of just went from the bottom up and i uh, just kind of made it lighter and made it darker as it went under top to the top of it just to uh, add some shading so now i'm going to move to that fur brown and we're going to do the same technique. So we're going to dry brush this uh, fur brown on here now. Now, the only thing to note here uh, I want to emphasize is don't put a lot of paint on your brush. There's really small details on these ships, uh, and it'll get lost uh, if there's too much paint on that brush. So it's almost like you have no paint on your brush. That's how dry sometimes you have to get to. Uh, and if it, you feel that you're not getting any of that on there and it's not highlighting anything, add a little bit more. But uh, make sure you dab it in that paper towel um, and, and just have a little bit on there. So again, as, uh, as I like to paint, I build layers. So I'm using my earth tones first. Then I'm kind of addressing the wood on the ship first. Uh, the same as I would a larger Firelock game ship. Uh, I'm going to do the exact same technique. So hopefully that shows up on the camera. I know it was a little bit challenging to try to paint this and show it on the camera uh, for you guys to see, but uh, I, I wanted you guys to see the technique at least uh, and see what I'm doing. So you can see how I'm just, uh, same as I would on a bigger ship, I'm just kind of rubbing it in the uh, smaller compartments. Uh, I do plan on adding a lighter color to that as well just to, uh, uh, you know, get some contrast to the top decks so it's different than the rest of the ship. And I, and I just kind of, I'm not overly careful with that part, uh, but I don't have a lot of paint on my brush. That's, again, be careful with how much paint you have on your brush. All right, so now we're going to hit the sails. And I just wanted to show you a little bit more of this technique. You see how I'm just pulling it from the bottom up? Uh, I just kind of wanted to highlight. Uh, it'll be more highlighted on the bottoms, even though that doesn't kind of make sense with the light. Uh, but I like the way it looks when the sails are overlapped. Uh, it's a little darker on the top, so it's almost kind of an implied shadow. 
Um, so I'm creating that um, by putting these layers on. All right, so I'm just showing you I'm going to do all those. As you can see, I only have the two ships now. I've abandoned the other ones. I knew I wouldn't have time to do all of them uh, because these are very time-consuming. I'll just tell you the total time painting these. Uh, it did take me about four hours to paint these two ships, uh, which is quite long. Um, you know, it's it's the same as, I, I guess, count. Uh, you know, painting a, a miniature or a character or something like that would take about that much time. Uh, after the primers dried. Now, note, I, I primed it the day before and then actually did the final paint job on a separate day. So I kind of just painted them all black and then kind of left them for 24 hours to dry. So they were nice and uh, sealed in. And then I came back and actually painted them. So now I'm moving to that skeleton bone. And I'm really only hitting the sails with that. I'm not going to paint any other parts of the ship. I'm just kind of painting the sails. Same technique, pulling from the bottom, pulling up. Uh, making it brighter um, it's going to be the brightest actually where the sails billowed the most um, and then it's kind of a uh, darker at the very top again where they overlap I just wanted to create some kind of shadow okay so this is after I finished painting them so you can see it's a little bit darker at the tops and the back uh, and you might not be able to see it on this I know we're dealing with small miniatures here it might be hard to see um, on this camera angle I, I did kind of do an over the top shot opposed to a side shot um i figured it might be a little bit easier to see all right so now we're going to hit with a matte white we're going to hit those sails again and we're just going to do the same technique and pull it up now that is a desert yellow i decided to use that uh for the tops of my decks so it's similar to the uh, browns that I put on earlier. Um, and it's kind of similar to what I always do. You, you make it the darkest, like, well, it's technically the lightest, but the most amount of paint in the center, and then you kind of fade it out as you go out. So you blob in the most amount of paint in the center, and then you just kind of rub it in and work it in. So then it just gets lighter as it goes to the edges. That gives you that illusion of a weathered look. Uh, even on a small little mini like this, we can still achieve that result doing that same technique. But just at a very small level here. Uh, I just wanted to show you that. Unfortunately, my hand's in the way. But you kind of saw it at the beginning there, how I did it. Just kind of put a very... And again, I, I you can see I just dabbed some of the paint on the plate there. I didn't put a whole bunch of paint on there. But I did put a little bit more than the dry brushing because I wanted to add a little bit more color to it. So I definitely added some more. So that's uh, the, actually the frigate I got in my hand in there. I kind of, uh, I was trying to stay to just the galleon, but I kind of been going back and forth here now. Um, but I used the same technique for both ships. Uh, I just don't end up showing you both. All right, so then we move to the sails. And I kind of moved to this, it's a, more of a round brush, but uh, it was good for adding this white in, um, mainly because I wanted to get around the back where the mass is. Um, it's a, I needed a little more of a, a finer detail brush uh, because I didn't want to get it, all the white all over the mast and stuff, so I had to uh, switch brushes. So originally I was using that square one, remember, and, and now I've moved into a more of a round brush. Um, but it's a little harder to get a smoother look, so you kind of have to wipe over it a few times. But you're able to get into the better details in there. All right, so this is kind of after I've added that yellow, uh, desert yellow. Uh, I painted the sails. Uh, and uh, we've done the mass. Uh, and really, the next steps are the finer paint details. So I've pretty well addressed the wood of the ship and the sails. And really, if you wanted to, you could just leave them at this stage. And it would they would look pretty good. Um, but I'm not going to go into too much in this video of the details, but I'm going to tell you uh, I'm going to use that gunmetal to uh, paint the cannons. The gold is for the trim on the back and the details work. Uh, the blue, I plan on putting a blue stripe on the frigate, even though I'm showing you the galleon. It's actually for the frigate. Uh, and then in a two-tone red, there's quite a bit of red I'm going to do on the mast. Uh, I'm going to treat it just like my bigger ships. I'm going to add some color to the masts. Uh, and of course there's going to be some red stripes uh, on these ships. If we're going to put a red stripe on the very bottom and the galleon, I'm going to put a couple across the uh, sides. 
Uh, and I'm really just telling you this. Uh, I'm not going to show you with a fine detail brush. It'd be really hard to see um, uh, what I was doing. Um, but I, you can see there was an assorted amount of uh, brushes there. All right, more fang brown. I'm going to add to the mask to add a little bit of color to just an off color to it. Um, and this is kind of an off white that I'm using for the base of the ships. Uh, and then I'm going to hit it with a skeleton horde contrast paint. That's kind of for where the cannons are. And you know where the grid is on the top there? I added that contrast paint to there and it seeps into those little uh, grid holes. It adds a uh, uh, darkness to it. All right, so after all those things, I didn't want to show you all those steps, uh, save time on this video. Uh, those are fine uh, paint brushes, but I just wanted to show you the basics uh, to get your ship to a certain level, and then you can add the details any which way you like. All right, so let's look at some of the pieces there. Those are the Spanish and English cards, and uh, let's take a look at this battle map. Now I have it all folded out. I took everything off, off the table. Uh, I can show you that those tiles are double-sided. They're islands, and they got fog on either side, or rocks, and... Uh, on the other side here's all the dice i did end up actually buying a second set of dice you don't need to uh, i just wanted to have two sets of six uh for the for two players so there's kind of the whole map what it looks like all the way out let's get a little closer look at some of these ships uh there's our english uh light frigate oh, i'll just show you the wake markers and that's where I, when you shoot the cannons you put the little cloud there uh, it's really cool to get all these cool markers there's a good look at the ship you can see where I've added uh, the details in there. I did mention I did add some uh, dynamic yellow. Uh, and I put contrast paint over top just for the tip of that boat. That was only for the English ship. Um, and then let's take a look at this uh, Spanish galleon after I finish painting it. So I just wanted to show you all the details on it. Just wanted to show you more of a close-up look. Um, I'm really happy how these turned out. Uh, for my first try at it, uh, I think uh, this technique works and uh, I can't wait to paint a whole bunch more ships. Alright, if you guys like what we're doing here in the Partnerhood, make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the Partnerhood. And get first hand information when I start these kind of projects. Alright everyone, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.